Welcome to another one of our um, sort of longer videos, I suppose you could say, where we try to break down a complex subject that requires more than just a quick video. So let's get into it. Um, so what we're discussing today is the upper trapezius and and you know everything about it that's um, what we sort of commonly have associated with, very much like the hamstrings, often blamed for for pain because um, they're often they often are quite problematic in, in say hamstrings for back pain but upper traps for shoulder and neck pain um, you know and it's it's easy for us to blame the area in pain but is it really what's going on so often when we have a tightness so in the hamstrings it's you know we're always trying to stretch it and find ways to loosen it and for the upper trapezius it's usually massage and and again maybe some stretches but massage because there's going to be a lot of trigger points around there um, which we'll touch on in a minute but really do we intend to strengthen it when there's something wrong um, you know and and logically it makes sense doesn't it if it's stiff you want to try and like make it more mobile um, but is, the, is this assumption that we've always sort of had correct and you know and the reason I pose this question is because I've seen so many people who are who've had that's exactly what they've been doing and they've been doing it for years and it's not getting them anywhere if anything it's making things worse so a good little quote here from Vladimir Yonder is um, often the side of pain is not the cause of pain so you always keep that in mind when you wherever you're feeling it it's probably a reaction to something else going on that may not be in pain so um, the the tightness is always always ask yourself why did the tightness get there like is it bad luck you know like it, it's never just bad luck it's unless it was from a traumatic accident like a, a collision injury in a sport or, or a car accident or something um, you could blame it on, on that accident on that reason but when it's just evolved and you can't actually re trace it to, to what it was you've got to ask yourself why did it get tight in the first place um, and you know and the bigger question to ask is is did the muscle the muscle overwork and create the dysfunctional movement or did the dysfunctional movement create the overworking muscle so that's the million dollar question you're trying to to find out so and it can be a bit you know you can be sort of put on a wild goose chase trying to find this out but really that's that's the, you've got to find the answer to that you find the answer to that you find the long-term solution um, when we break down this is where a lot of the um, the stuff regarding upper trapezius um, took place where where we trying to loosen it and, and it does make sense and it does work at times but I'll show you in a minute where there's many times it may not work and it may actually make things worse but if you've never heard anything about the tonic and phasic muscles this is from Vladimir Yonder is the one who did, who came up with this many many years ago um, and basically there's muscles that are prone to shortening and tightening and there's muscles prone to lengthening inhibition and weakening and I've circled here are the ones that are that that are common to the neck and the shoulder and you can see the upper trapezius on this side and levator scapula will be on this one as well which is sort of his partner in crime um, and they, they're very much prone to shortening and tightening so when there's something wrong within a joint um, that's out of balance or overworked or something's gone wrong the, the, the tendency of this muscle is to start working harder and harder and on the flip side of that there's muscles that are opposing that are and you'll see in a minute they're actually not opposing they're actually working with him um, they will actually be prone to weakening and becoming inhibited and doing less and less forcing that one to do more and more and more um, the upper traps to do more and more so the longer that stays the, in that sort of um, dysfunction chronic pain will continue to evolve so so in the, the theory behind the um, correcting that was always to try and stretch and loosen the upper trapezius via massage stretching so you're trying to weaken it so it doesn't become so over dominant and then trying to strengthen the serratus anterior and lower traps and like I said most times this may work but not always because a tight muscle does not necessarily mean it is strong um, so you know sometimes a tight muscle is because it is so weak especially when it's been uh, left unattended for such a long time and if you, especially if you've been doing massage and stretching for a long long time and done nothing to strengthen that area it, it's going to develop trigger points to make itself stronger because it just doesn't have the capacity to do what it's meant to do so um, so what happens if there's a weakness at the upper traps too and, and even how do you know if it is weak 
because how do you how can you tell the difference between weak and tight? It's very um, very difficult to explain. So what you have to you sort of need to understand a bit behind it of like what its role is. When you understand its role, then you'll sort of see why it's important to actually look at the its its function of being strong and and capable of producing movement. So. Um, Going back a bit further than that, if you and this comes big back to that tonic muscles, the, most of the tonic ones are like low threshold and they're type one fiber, so meaning their their role is more concerned with stabilization than producing huge forces of power. So um, when when you're choosing sets and reps, that that's important to understand because basically it's, it's like a marathon runner. It's sort of trying to last a long time with low intensity, but not not do a huge amount of force. Other muscles that are meant to pre create a force would be more involved. Um, so, but the one big thing that it does do, it's, it becomes it's a very important um, muscle within the the role of upward rotation of the scapula. And this scapular function is so so important if you've got neck or shoulder pain. So it's actually meant to work in tandem with the serratus anterior and lower traps. Most of the time we just focus on these and we're trying to strengthen them all the time. And that's all great, but sometimes we forget that this one is actually involved in that process. So with it, without the assistance of these two, he, he can't do his job either. So he can't do it on its own. It, it need, they need all three. All right. So these muscles, when these muscles work evenly in perfect timing, you've got great stability of the neck and the shoulder. All right. So you've got got good control of that humerus being able to move because that this joint here the scapula which is crucial to it is actually helping it to stay centered within the socket without it the joint is easily exposed to injury and pain so here's an example of what would happen when that scapula moves out into well the arm moves into duction to do like an overhead movement the serratus anterior is the key here this sort of pushes the scapula out wide the lower traps pull it down and the upper traps here, you can see, pull it up. So there's sort of like three things going on. If one of them's not doing a good job, then they all don't do a good job. It goes all dysfunctional. And you, often you'll see with neck pain and shoulder pain, the rhomboids kicking in too much. And these middle traps pulling it in too close to the middle, which resists the, the upward rotation through here. All right, And then you'll get trigger points up above because they're both trying to pull it up and over instead of wrapping around. Um, that's why the, this one's really the key, but like I said, it needs the the role of the others. And if someone's and you'll see in a minute, the person who's done too many exercises of trying to pull the shoulders down and back will have a hard time. Um, so posture. So a big part of the problem, and this again comes, and I've I've brought up this many times with our in the videos where we talked about gripping. Um, and this is a problem with the person who has a bit of an understanding of posture and we would sort of call them an educated person. So in their attempt to achieve great posture, in the, which basically is trying to prevent these problems, they've excessively started to pull their shoulders back and down. Um, and when this happens, it pulls, pulls that scap, or reinforces it into retraction, as you can see in the picture here. And that's where I'm talking a minute ago about those middle traps and rhomboids really squeezing too hard. And they're now gonna resist the the um, upward rotation by forcing it into the scapula into downward rotation and also an anterior tilted position instead of posterior. So lots of tightness, impingement and discomfort. So this area is going to be a huge problem. And then you'll see also loss of thoracic mobility, which um, again is another big huge component of a healthy neck and shoulder. So an example of gym work where we see someone doing way too many deadlifts, farmers walks, chin ups, trying, which are all great exercises, don't get me wrong, they're great, but if you're doing way too many and not doing enough to counter it with the upper body or the overhead movement of pushing um, and rowing movements as well, then you're going to have start to get a depressed shoulder where the, it's actually getting pulled too far down and now you're going to get all these trigger points and dysfunction around the scapula that's actually going to lead to this lengthening itself and becoming extremely weak. So this is where you'll, you'll think, okay, I need to stretch it more because it's so tight, but it's tight because it's weak, not because it's, it's, it's short. Um, so over -re retraction, not, never a good thing. All right, so, to, so mainly the rhomboids and middle trap dis disrupting the shoulder mechanics, depressed risk scapula, um, restricting upward rotation, and then you'll st and the, the end result of all this, by the way, is a shoulder impingement, probably torn labrum as well, um, 
And like I said, it's a bit ironic because the exercises you're actually using are trying to enhance your posture and prevent injury when in actually they're going to create one. Um, so when we touched on it in the first slide, we said where, the, you know, where you feel the pain is not of, often not the problem. It, the pain is just the signal, all right? So the pain and, ta and tightness in the upper trap is not always the problem. You will often need to look around these guys which are in the middle of the back, which we've spoken about just in the last few slides. So if you can really start to mobilise through the, the, this area and in, in work on thoracic mobility sort of work, it'll make a huge difference in giving you a better chance on actually getting this to not react in a way of creating trigger points to create better stability for the scapula because it can't move properly because they're holding it back all the time. Um, constantly weakening that and ignoring this will do very little and most likely make, make the problems worse. All right, and you'll, you might get a temporary relief that'll last a day and then you're back to the way it was. So what can you do? Well, well, trigger point can't be ignored because we have to get rid of them first. If we don't get rid of them first, they just continue to overwork. Even when we're doing the right thing, it just does all the right things poorly because they're overworking. So first thing to do is release them and there's several videos that you can go onto the YouTube channel, I'll put the links in, in the description under the video here for um, details on how to do this but you know you want to see you can see this is getting rid of that scap the, where those rhomboids and that are that's a very tight one um, around the infraspinatus and teres muscles you know these guys also really limit that overhead this one's actually a real good one for, for instantly improving overhead movement it doesn't last for very long until you follow it up but very very uh, useful in in between sets so if you release these prior to your stabilizing drills and strengthening, they'll give you a, a great chance of doing them really well and, and not aggravating your pain. Thoracic mobility, which we discussed, this would be thoracic extension and this would be thoracic rotation. You need both. If you don't have both, you're going to have trouble being able to um, do any of these things around the scapula because the scapula is sort of meant to sit on top of this thorax. So when this thorax has got problems, you're going to have problems everywhere. So that would be your first thing you start with. Um, assessing weakness. Well, how do you know if you've got weakness? Well, here's an example of, of a person with, a, with heavily depressed shoulders. You can see there's pretty much no upper trapezius at all. Um, the clavicle here, this is another good thing if you want to look in the mirror. If this is horizontal, like so, in this case, he's got a bit of a downward slope. It's not too bad. You know, I'd probably like to see a little bit more. If it's got a nice angle on it, then, then you're in a good position. But if it's dead horizontal, which this guy's would be if we could see him from the front, you know that you've got a heavily depressed shoulder and you can be careful of deadlifts, farmers walks especially, and, and chin ups and all those things. And you would really want to spend time learning to get overhead movement back because there's going to be chron chronic trigger points all throughout here because everything's getting pulled down too far. Right, this is where someone's gone too far with what they're doing. Also very common in throwing sports um, because really the lats and that are heavily involved in throwing action um, that's why they may need to counter that with some of their, their exercise to balance out better. Secondly, if you get pain from instantly from overhead exercise, that's a, that's a dead giveaway. So, um, it, you know, that's where you, you, you're trying to determine if it's weak. So, you know, sometimes it's the trigger points and everything's in the wrong place, but sometimes these people that can do all the other exercises except overhead things. They can even do push-ups. Um, and chest presses, and this is what I put here. I've seen female clients easily knock out 20 push ups, big chest presses, but can barely lift the tiniest weight overhead. Um, that's telling me there's a huge problem with the overhead pattern, um, and you, that's where you let, you've got to work on that because otherwise, they're, they're always going to be just a step away from neck pain um, and shoulder, shoulder injuries as well, probably. Um, so, if it's not consistent, so if you, if you, like in this case, if I can see someone can do this but can barely lift like a small dumbbell overhead, I know there's an issue, right? And that's sort of giving me a, a thing I've got to like look for weakness more so than just mobility problems. Um, great exercise to counter the depression and the scapular function. Well, I might start with easy things first. Um, wall slides would be my first choice. It's a very, very simple stability drill. Um, then I might move to a closed chain thing with like a yoga push up. So going from a push up into downward dog. This is great to learn how to get the serratus anterior to wrap around um, and not cave in, especially on the way down. Both of these exercises are trying to achieve the same thing. That's just the easier version and that's the harder version. Um, uh, strengthening the upper tracks well, can be really tricky because 
you know, you're really going to be working into um, into the area that's in pain. And you know, Exelos is commonly known for helping upper traps in the past. Over here, presses. Well, we know they're going to be really hard to do. They're probably going to be the last thing. The easier one might be the shrugs, but again, this might really switch on the lavada scap and upper traps, and you're going to straight away get headaches and all sorts of problems. So. So how do you do it? How do you strengthen without causing any of the pain? So, well, there's a couple of ways that we might try. This is one of my favourites that I might use, where I use a barbell that's on an angle here. Um, and basically by having our arm extended like this, it already puts the scapula in a position of, of perfect alignment that uh, gives my, my shoulder more room to move and I can really slowly and, and carefully feel like I'm working up a traps but without the trigger point because of this arm placement wrapping my scapula out wide so I'm getting rid of this rhomboid feeling that's pulling me in that's why this is such a cool exercise um, so that's an alternative to a shrug um, overhead press kneeling so this might follow up after the yoga push up that we showed you a minute ago um, I like this one because you can you really simplifies the movement and again you can get that feeling to wrap around just start with a very light weight um, again I'll put the videos links for all these ones that we've done before but that, that real good upward rotation feel on this because you're really simplifying it and with the one arm it gives you your thoracic more mobility to get a small amount of rotation um, this last one is sort of getting to the overhead directly and we're sort of sitting in a position where where you can get a, the more space in the shoulder and basically it's like protraction that we would use for serratus anterior in a push up but doing it vertically instead of horizontally um, you know, another excellent one that you can use as a stepping stone to the more harder overhead things. Um, and again, here's the uh, videos that I just put on a week ago about how, how this all works. So check that in the description under the video here to see more. Um, also, just make sure you keep everything balanced with your other exercise. So you push and pull in the horizontal plane. If I'm doing a deadlift, I'm going to have to do a Turkish get up or something that works again. Um, through, so they've got gripping and then I've got mobility, I've got pulling, I've got pushing. So I've got something that's opposing all the time. So if I get too stiff from here, I'm going to have to loosen up. And if I'm too loose, I'm going to have to stiffen up and so on and so on. Um, muscles, so the muscle, the shoulders, try to think more than just muscles. Try and think of like what's the movement that you need. You need the mobility of the thoracic, you need the posterior tilt of the scapula, and you need the upward rotation of the scapula. The muscles involved heavily in all these are the thoracic erectors, um, your lower traps and your serratus anterior, and of course the upper traps, which we spoke about. And this is a picture of serratus anterior, if you're not sure where that one is, where that's located. Um, stability at the other joints, don't, don't disregard what's going on down below. If you've got problems at the pelvis especially, you're going to have problems at the shoulder. So really make sure that your base is quite good to begin with. And, and again, you can check out all our other articles. We've discussed this many times before. But again, don't just think of where the pain is is always the problem. Sometimes we might see things coming from the feet. Um, and like I said, a lot of the shoulder things, I'm looking at issues around the pelvis may not be in pain, but they're definitely not working very well. Um, learning how to move, so make sure you learn how to move with all these movement patterns. You can get a free report um, that, that goes through a lot of how to do that for you. And you know, and always remember that you're trying to sort of always work on the mobility side things first, so that trigger point release must come prior to doing stability and strengthening. And obviously, this be the last thing, especially if you play sports. If you don't play sports, maybe not as important to you, but. You know, these are the things that we've spoken about already. You just got to make sure that you, you follow that process and you'll be fine. Um, for more help with, um, you know, because I'm just touched on this, um, you know, you, you can get like our shoulder paint, and that, that actually isn't coming soon. That's actually available now. I should have deleted that, sorry. Um, so you can get that from our online shop, and, and for more programs of strengthening, and that, this one um, covers a lot of stuff there. but specifically for shoulder and neck pain this is an, an excellent resource it really breaks down all the things I've spoken about programs and so forth so you're not guessing on how to put it together you're sort of doing what I've gone through quickly now um, so you can get it right all right so I hope you've enjoyed that video and it gives you a bit of clarity about the upper traps and um, you can have nice ways on how to strengthen it if it is weak or how to even identify it's weak so um, Make sure to check out the description on the video because I've chucked heaps of links in there for you um, to help you out. Alright, thanks again and I'll see you on our next